Hey folks, Jen or Murderfin here, and today we're going to take a look at the Vision Eternity Removable Atomizer. Um, you can get it from a lot of different places. Electronic sticks, mad vapes, um, clouds of vapor, a bunch of people were carrying them. Uh, standard Chinese import. Uh, let's take a look. So let's take a look at what comes with the Vision Eternity Rebuildable Atomizer. It comes in a nice little tin box with some fairly decent instructions um, on how to change the wick, uh, what pieces you need for what mode of operation. Not exhaustive, but fairly decent. As you can see, it was designed to use with an Ego battery and indeed Ego T tanks if you want to. So the pieces that come in the box are a nice matching metal mouthpiece, the top for using it with an Ego T tank, some extra wicks and little uh, pieces we'll look at, an adapter to make it seamlessly fit on your Ego battery, hides the extra connector, the uh, middle piece which also has the uh, spike and wicking for the tanks although if you're not using a tank it uh, doesn't appear to get in the way we'll leave that one out the actual base with the 510 connector and the coil and wicking material Take a closer look at that in a little bit. And a second top to use for dripping, which is pretty much. So I went ahead and screwed the uh, spike base on over the uh, coil, which pushes the wicking material down into the base. And you can see the nice little uh, O-rings that sit on the top of that to seal it. And I'm going to grab the uh, one of the two tops to put on the dripping top. Tighten that up good. And again, there's those nice uh, O-rings there on either side to uh, make it not leak, which is always a good thing. And I'll put the uh, dripping top on. And it's a nice, uh, very shiny unit, ready for its mouthpiece. Shiny. I like shiny. In design and function, its um, size, especially its use of the Ego T tanks, is pretty similar to the Bully A2. Um, that was one of the first rebuildables on the market, actually. And you can, if you use the other top to this, you know, function the same way. It's got the spike. Um, it's got the coil underneath. Um, it's a little more innovative in the coil design with those two little um, kind of stands that the coil sits in underneath the spike. Um, but we could, if we put this top on, simply stick the Ego T tank in here. Now, I, I did try to use it with the tank for a while, and like most things with the Ego T tank, it wicked like shit. Um, I, I, I don't think that's the problem of the Vision Eternity. I think that's the problem of the uh, Ego T tank. Um, and I did even try the soft rubber caps that come with it instead of the hard plastic caps that you might have on some of your Ego T tanks. So I basically just stuck with using the dripping top now, as we'll see in a little bit, this doesn't have any air holes on the side. It pulls air from the bottom. So it actually works remarkably well with bottom feeders. Now there's a nice cap here um, to go onto your Ego style battery. Um, it fits over those outer uh, screws on there. And then you plug the vision into that and it kind of hides the connector. and makes it seem like one smooth silk unit. Now, pairing one of these with an Ego Twist in case your coil isn't exactly 1.5 ohms is great. 
Now let's go ahead. Now I'm not going to cover how to make a coil and cut a wick because there's tons of videos and I've covered that in other reviews. So basically we got some wicking material here, a coil wrapped around it, and the two ends sticking out. Now where this differs is there's these tiny little metal, oh my god, cat hair, um, and oh I dropped the itty bitty little bit because I'm getting old and I can't see and now I have to go find it. But anyway, instead of wrapping around a screw or through a hole that you have to screw down, you feed the wire into these little, like, coil stands. And then the coil sort of sits in the little U-top of this little metal piece, and I sort of bend the coil on the bottom to hold that little metal bit in place. So we got it on one side. Now mind you, I have really big fingers and really bad eyes, so these rebuildables are never easy for me. Now I'm going to get the other end of the coil into the other little coil stand, wick stand, whatever we want to call them. Yeah, maybe easier for you than for me. Coordination, not my strong suit. So let's get that up there and get that little stand on the other side of the coil. Holding the wick, there we go, and bend the wire out the other way. Get on there. Okay, gotcha. Okay, now, so the wires are coming through those little metal things, and I have them bent out the other way. Now, on the bottom piece here, um, there's the center pole where the air comes up, and then there's a positive and negative post on either side. And what you do is you slip these little metal wick stands down onto the poles which brings them into the contact with the wire on either side making your connection so there's no screws involved there's no anything else involved you just have to get those little stands on there and then the wire makes contact inside them on the post holding the coil above where the airflow is coming up which also tends to give you great vapor because um, you're sucking the vapor like, basically right up over the coil. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stick this on an Ego T and make sure she works. I'm not quite cutting those coil ends yet because you know how many times I screw up and I've already cut the coils and then I don't have enough length left in my wire to fix anything. And we have ignition. Now I'm going to pop it on my Darwin quick so I can actually see what I've created the coil at here. And uh, 3.2, 3.3 ohms. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and snip the excess off those little wires. Snipped. Coil's all in place. And as you screw on the next piece, it pushes that wicking material sort of down into the base where the juice ends up sitting, like so. So let's put it on, get our wick in place, and we'll be ready to go. Oops. Stay on. Screw that down till the o-ring disappears. Put our top on, and we're ready to vape. Yeah, I know I gurgle. I always gurgle on bottom feeders. Just like dripping. I, I over squeeze. That is a mostly PG juice. Um, these visions work great on bottom feeders because unlike the Phoenix and some of the other ones, they don't have an air hole inside. They're pulling the air from the bottom, so they also suck the juice up the bottom into the well. And the minute I slapped this on my Rio, I fell in love with my Rio again. That is at least a 70% PG juice. This one's about 50-50, and I got a 2.2 ohm coil on this one, so I'm running it at a little higher voltage. So 
So the minute I fell in love with my Rio, I, I ordered another one. Um, and I don't really like dripping, so the bottom beaters are great for me. But I've also just been using it for dripping. It's like living on one of the Pro Berries. That one needs some more liquid in it, but um, flavor on them is great. I, I really think it's part of that design of where the coil sits over the little tube that the air comes in that just makes them do great vapor. Flavor's pretty good. They change flavor pretty easily, um, about as easily as a stainless steel mesh wick. Um, they don't have the stainless steel futz that you have to go through. Um, the mesh coil, there have been some arguments about what it's made of, but you can always replace it with whatever you use to make coils, wicks with, um, on your own. So that's not such a big deal. And it's not dry. If it's wet, um, it shouldn't be burning. Um, I think it's the nicest looking and working of the um, cheap Chinese, uh, you know, massive run mass-produced rebuildable atomizers that we've seen. I, I have to finish the video on this yet, but I have the A7 from Empire, you know, that was touted as a bottom feeder. Uh, this works better on the bottom feeder, um, although, I mean, I wish I, the A7's a little smaller, which might be nice, because, you know, they do look like huge, enormous things on, uh, on bottom feeders, but they work amazingly well. Great flavor, enormous amounts of vapor. They feed great. Um, the draw, unlike most uh, rebuildable atomers, is not super, super airy because it's coming from the bottom. So it's a stiffer draw. So if you've been avoiding things like the Phoenix or you weren't too happy with that, or some of the Genesis rebuildables because the draw is really airy, which of course with the stainless steel wick gives you more vapor. That's kind of how they work. Um, this is a stiffer draw, so you may actually like this better. Just ignore the whole tea tank, the, the, the ego tea tank things that come with it. They, they just don't wick. Um, they never have, really, in anything I've tried them in, including the Bully A2s or the, just the standard ego tea tanks. So just ignore that and go either for a drip or a bottom feeder and slap it on. Um, they're under 30 bucks, available for most of the vendors. Some have discount codes, some don't. So. You know, your price might vary a little bit. It comes with at least three wicks. Um, I've made my own wicks for them, and they perform equally as well as the wicks that came with them. And they just work great. I kind of wish that we could take this, you know, spiked bit out of the middle that we don't really need if we're not using the Ego T. Um, but it doesn't really get in the way of its operation. Um, I suppose I could find a way to make it fit. Um, the threads don't seem to be quite right because I have tried that. Makes it a little longer than it needs to be for just a drip unit, but eh, I can live with that. Um, so again, one of the best performing uh, of the uh, mass-produced rebuildable atomizers I've seen come out. The Vision Eternity comes in a nice little box, extra pieces, um, and the bonus of that little ring to put on your ego. So, I mean, it really does. With the ego tees, it's a great out and about. I mean, I have it on the Pro Ray at home, but I've gone out with it a number of times just on a shorty ego twist. <clears throat> Let's see what I have it set to. It works just as well. Um, and it does hold quite a bit of juice in there, so, you know, I hate dripping because I over drip and I make a mess. You can still over drip this, but it does, but it takes like 10 drops of time. So you put 10 drops in it and you're vaping for like half an hour before you need to drip again. Unless you're an uber chain vapor. So that works pretty great. Give them a check.